In the early hours of February the 13th, 1692, the sulphurous smell of a fired gun hung in the air of these mountains. Men, women and children screamed in terror, withering against pain as they fell bludgeoned to death by men of the army. The shameful scar of a dreadful and tragic event was etched upon the landscape of a beautiful and otherwise honourable place forever. Whispers of plots and betrayal leaked from every shadowy corner of the nation as old alliances were broken and new ones swiftly made. The year 1688. The last Catholic King of England, James II, sat precariously on the throne. His eldest daughter Mary and her Dutch husband, William of Orange, plotted with Parliament to depose Mary's father from the throne. By November of the same year, the deed was done and the glorious revolution had taken place limiting forever the power of the monarchy over Parliament. James fled England and the following year Mary was crowned joint sovereign of Great Britain with her husband William III. The English, whilst not ecstatic about their new monarch, were content. And this was largely why the revolution was known as glorious. However, this title forgets the bloodshed that took place on its account in Scotland and Ireland. The Highlands of Scotland were still very much in support of the deposed King James II and proved at best difficult to appease. Finally, in 1691, in an attempt to gain control and peace in the Highlands, King William negotiated an amnesty with the clan leaders of the Highlands. A requirement of the scheme was that all clan chiefs take an oath of allegiance to William and Mary before the 1st of January, 1692. A lot of clan chiefs left taking the oath until the last minute, yet despite this all but one, MacDonald of Glencoe made the deadline. A combination of bad luck and a fierce snowstorm prevented MacDonald from taking the oath on time. Nevertheless, MacDonald returned to Glencoe, believing his oath legal and his clan safe. However, the authorities chose to make an example of the MacDonald clan and declared the oath invalid. They ordered a military force of loyal clan supporters of the Crown under the command of Robert Campbell into Glencoe. Under the guise of friendship, the Campbells convinced the MacDonalds that they had come in peace. The MacDonalds welcomed their old advisories into their homes. They entertained, fed and shared their food and clothes with them. Then very early on the morning of February 13th, 1692, the following order was issued to Captain Robert Campbell of Glen Lyon. You are hereby ordered to fall upon the rebels, the Macdonalds of Glencoe, and put all to the sword under 70. You are to have a special care that the old fox and his sons do not, upon no account, escape your hands. You are to secure all the avenues that no man can escape. This you are to put in execution at five o'clock in the morning precisely. And by that time or very shortly after it, I'll strive to be with you with a stronger party. If I do not come at five, you are not to tarry for me, but fall on. This is by the King's special command for the good and the safety of the country that these miscants may be cut off root and branch. See that this be put into execution without feud or favour, else you may expect to be treated as not true to the king or government, nor a man fit to carry commission in the king's service, expecting you will not fail in this, fulfilling hereof as you love yourself. I subscribe these with my hand. Signed Robert Duncanson for their majesty's service to Captain Robert Campbell of Glen Lyon. The Macdonalds were no saints themselves. Personally responsible for a great many atrocities against the Campbells, they had spilled their fair share of blood in the name of clan rivalry. However, what made the events of February the 13th, 1692 so heinous was the matter of murder under trust. Not all the soldiers were in support of the orders and many were repulsed by them. Indeed, it's questionable whether the soldiers garrisoned with the Macdonalds for 11 days had any knowledge of the job that they'd been sent to do prior to the morning of February the 13th, 1692. The Campbells, although politically astute and supporters of the English king, were still Highlanders. 
bound like any other Highlander to their Highland code. The events of February 13th, 1692 broke that code in the worst possible way. And I sincerely doubt this would have been done willingly, if at all, by many. We're now standing in Glencoe, and you can see the three peaks of the three sisters of Glencoe, the spectacular scenery above us, and down below us, the Glen itself, where the massacre took place in 1692. Thanks for being here. If you'd like to see more of our videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Until the next time, keep your memories close but keep those around you closer. Deb out. <laughs>